We are learning that Juno has found an FM signal emanating from one of the gas giant's moons. However, this is the first time the phenomenon has been seen emanating from the moon. Jupiter's most phenomenal moon, Io, has been the main focus of exploration for scientists and the Juno spacecraft. But it has been announced recently that this moon has started sending strange messages to the Juno space probe. Why is this happening? Who or what is sending these signals and what do these signals mean? Join us in this video as we discuss these and more. Jupiter is one of the strangest and most unique planets in our solar system. The most distinctive feature of this planet is its size. Jupiter is so big that if the Earth were a table tennis egg, Jupiter would be a basketball. Jupiter is about 11 times bigger than Earth. Its size is so massive that even if you put all the other planets together, it would still be smaller than Jupiter. Jupiter's enormous size has earned it the king of planets. It is a truly enormous world with a diameter of about 139,820 kilometers or 86,880 miles. Jupiter is adorned with planetary rings. These rings came as a surprise when discovered by NASA's Voyager 1 in 1979. The rings are made of small, dark particles that are often difficult to see. So far, we've learned much about the planet's atmospheric features, including its colorful cloud bands and raging storms. Jupiter is located at a distance of about 484 million miles or 778 million kilometers from the Sun. This also equates to about 5.2 astronomical units. Another interesting thing about Jupiter is its rotation. While it takes the Earth 24 hours to complete one whole spin around its axis, it takes Jupiter just 10 hours. As a result, Jupiter has the shortest day in the solar system, 10 hours. However, due to its long distance from the Sun, one year on Jupiter is equivalent to 12 years on Earth. Another strange thing about Jupiter is that it seems more like a star than a planet. The more scientists learned about this space giant, the more they realized that it seemed to have begun the process of becoming a star. But for some reason, it couldn't complete the process and ended up as a planet. You see, unlike most planets in the solar system, Jupiter is mostly composed of hydrogen and helium. This hydrogen-helium combination is mostly found in stars like our Sun, as nuclear reactions produce heat and radiation. Scientific research has revealed that Jupiter has gas and dust particles like a star because it used up most of the leftover materials from the Sun after the Sun was completely formed. And so, while it has star's ingredients, it never grew large enough to trigger the reactions that would have enabled it to produce heat and light as stars do. Scientists also believe this contributes to the planet's strange atmosphere. Jupiter's atmosphere brews extremely wild hurricanes with superfast lightning 100 times brighter than anything we have ever seen here. Jupiter's upper atmosphere constantly swirls with dark clouds and lightning. This has made the study of the planet, especially its core, very difficult. The harsh conditions below the planet's clouds, including intense radiation, scorching temperatures, and crushing pressures, have made it difficult for any spacecraft to survive. In December 1995, NASA dropped a probe known as the Galileo Atmospheric Probe into Jupiter's clouds. It was equipped with many scientific instruments to measure the temperature, pressure, and composition of Jupiter's atmosphere. It managed to secure a good amount of data. However, the Galileo Atmospheric Probe didn't last long. It only operated for 58 minutes before getting destroyed by Jupiter's harsh climate. The Juno spacecraft and its discoveries. The Juno spacecraft is a remarkable innovation that has helped humankind learn more about Jupiter. It was built by Lockheed Martin and is operated by NASA. This space probe was launched in 2011 from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station to study Jupiter. Data from this spacecraft revealed unexpected facts about Jupiter's atmosphere, core, and its many moons. It showed that the planet's core is not a simple solid structure, but a mixture of hazy materials the Juno spacecraft also revealed the metallic hydrogen in Jupiter. Deep beneath the terrible clouds on Jupiter, hydrogen gas becomes hotter as it approaches the planet's core. At one point, the pressure increases so much that hydrogen gas transforms into a strange electrically charged metallic liquid. This appears as a sloshing fluid on the planet. 
This sloshing fluid, called liquid metallic hydrogen, makes up about 80% of Jupiter's total volume, making it the largest ocean in the solar system. The metallic hydrogen in Jupiter also helps to create its powerful magnetic field. Jupiter's magnetic field is over 20,000 times stronger than Earth's. Scientists believe the hydrogen gas on Jupiter turns into a liquid due to compression from the high temperature and pressure on the planet. At depths about half the distance to its core, the pressure becomes so powerful that electrons are squeezed out of the hydrogen atoms. This makes the liquid electrically conductive, like a metal. Jupiter's fast rotation is also thought to help drive electrical currents on the planet. These two things, the fast spinning and the weird hydrogen ocean, make Jupiter's climate always aggressive, with lightning, hurricanes, and dark clouds. Here on Earth, liquid metallic hydrogen cannot exist naturally. Maybe if it did, we'd have magnetic fields as strong as Jupiter. Who knows? But this metallic hydrogen is not the core of Jupiter. It's just an ocean surrounding the core. Jupiter has a diffuse core in which solid bits are mixed with hydrogen. This is why the core lacks a well-defined boundary and takes up about half of the planet's interior. NASA's Juno spacecraft has made these discoveries by studying the planet from outside. But this isn't all this spacecraft has helped us uncover. It has also brought so much information from Jupiter's moons. By carefully navigating through Jupiter's radiation belts, Juno has been able to study Jupiter's moons in unprecedented detail. Jupiter has several moons circling it. In fact, Jupiter is seen as a mini solar system because of the several moons. Since the 1970s till date, astronomers have kept discovering more and more moons on the planet. Jupiter's moons. No one can say the exact number of moons attached to Jupiter. We know of at least 79 moons that have been found orbiting it. Its large mass gives Jupiter the stability to exert a gravitational force strong enough to spread over a large area and keep multiple moons in place. Some of the earliest moons found on this planet are also called the Galilean moons because they were discovered by the late astronomer Galileo Galilei. These four moons are the largest moons found on Jupiter. They are named Europa, Ganymede, Callisto, and Io. Callisto is the farthest moon from Jupiter, as well as its second largest moon. Jupiter's moons are just as interesting as the planet itself. Callisto has many craters, some estimated to be billions of years old. Also, this moon does not experience any geologic or tectonic activities. It just remains still. This is why scientists nicknamed it the Dead Moon. Callisto also endures the least magnetic force from Jupiter. Next to Callisto is Ganymede, the largest of the moons. This moon is unique because it has its own magnetic field. The magnetic field on this moon causes auroras to circle the north and south poles of the moon. This moon was nicknamed Jupiter 3. After Ganymede comes Europa. This moon has a size similar to the Earth's moon. Its uniqueness lies in its severe cracks and streaks located on its icy surface. Also, Europa is the brightest of the four moons, thanks to its high reflectivity. It's even confirmed to be one of the brightest moons in the universe. This moon has interested scientists for so long because they suspected of harboring an ocean beneath the ice believed to contain ocean life. Another reason the Europa moon has been closely studied is that it is close to Io, the most fascinating moon. Io and the strange signals. Jupiter's Io is one moon scientists can't get over. Ever since it was first discovered, this moon has exhibited something phenomenal what we never thought was possible, volcanoes in space. Imagine a moon that can burst out hot jets of molten magma into the air, or a scorching planet with rivers of molten magma flowing like streams of water on its surface. Well, that's typically Io. This moon is the most volcanically active body in the solar system. Io contains hundreds of active volcanoes, and scientists suspect many more inactive ones are waiting to erupt. So, you'd always find Io spewing sulfurous plumes hundreds of miles high into space. However, because this moon is lodged between its two big brothers, Europa and Ganymede, Io is usually engaged in a gravitation tug of war between the two moons and Jupiter. Scientists believe that these tidal forces are parts of the things responsible for the massive heat in Io, which further drives its intense volcanic activity. Thanks to its many volcanoes, Io has a scary landscape, albeit an ever-changing one, as lava oozes onto the moon's surface, filling up impact craters and creating new pools of magma. Scientists are yet to determine the exact composition of this magma, but it's suspected to be molten sulfur and its associated compounds. The moon has a thin atmosphere, which is primarily composed of sulfur dioxide. 
Volcanoes on Io can reach temperatures of 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. As you well know, scientists love to give planetary bodies nicknames. And so, just like they did with other moons on Jupiter, they gave this moon a nickname, the Celestial Body of Fire. Io is truly a unique moon on a unique planet. It's about the same age as Jupiter and orbits about 262,000 miles. This orbiting takes around 1.77 Earth days to complete. Io is not perfectly spherical, but oblong. This is because Io orbits Jupiter in an elliptical fashion and creates a variation in the strength of Jupiter's gravitational force on the Moon. This causes a never-ending push-and-pull force exerted on the Moon's interior in several directions. As a result, the Io's surface bulges by as much as 330 feet or 100 meters, creating the shape of an ellipse. Io's elliptical orbit is most likely due to its location between two big moons. As detrimental as this eternal tug-of-war may seem, it still allows Io to exert its own influence on Jupiter. Since Io's orbit cuts across Jupiter's powerful magnetic field, it turns Io into a powerful electric generator. Io can generate as much as 400,000 volts across itself. In other words, this moon can create 3 million amperes of electrical current. In fact, this electric current generated by Io is the major contributor to the unending lightning storms on Jupiter. As the current travels back along Jupiter's magnetic field lines, it creates lightning in Jupiter's upper atmosphere. Fascinating! But there is still more. As Jupiter rotates, it affects Io because the magnetic forces strip away almost a ton of Io's material every second. This liberated material gets ionized and forms a ring-shaped cloud of radiation called plasma torus. These are the ions that cause the auroras found in Jupiter's atmosphere. Auroras are stunning when seen on Earth, but they look even more fascinating on Jupiter, where they contrast with the dark clouds and lightning storms in the atmosphere. The Hubble Space Telescope first spotted this breathtaking phenomenon. It took a while for scientists to discover Io was responsible for it. These auroras form when some ions escape the ring and get pulled into Jupiter's upper atmosphere. So as you can see, Jupiter's Io has many tricks up its sleeve. But the latest puzzle with this moon is pretty much the most disturbing. It is the strange messages the Io moon has been sending. Thanks to NASA's incredible spacecraft Juno, they have been getting strange radio missions from Io. So, who is sending these transmissions? And what exactly do they mean? It is not very common to receive transmissions from space objects. Most times when these things happen, the first thing that comes to mind is that an extraterrestrial being is behind it. Recently, scientists have been picking up several strange signals in space. For instance, in early 2023, they detected an impossible spinning object in space that kept sending radio signals to the Earth every 18 minutes. This object was 4,000 light years away from Earth, and scientists believed it was the work of aliens. So imagine the surprise when the famous Io moon started sending signals to us on Earth. Scientists have always wondered if there could be life on Jupiter's moons. The signals were very strong and highly supported this suspicion. The only moon on Jupiter that scientists had believed could harbor alien life was Europa due to the vast ocean beneath its icy surface. Scientists have long predicted that there could be life within that ocean, perhaps aquatic animals like the ones in our oceans or something even more bizarre. But these signals didn't come from Europa, they came from Io. In Io's case, however, the signals don't seem to be the work of aliens. Somehow, it seems that this, too, is a byproduct of Io's many quirks. Remember, earlier in this video, we said that volcanoes are abundant on this moon and that it is also subjected to the effects of Jupiter's magnetic forces. We also explained how Io loses one ton of its gases and particles per second into space and that these particles become ionized and split into ions and electrons. Well, scientists have discovered that when these electrons are caught in Jupiter's magnetic field and approach Jupiter's pole, they generate decimetric radio emissions. When the Juno spacecraft is appropriately positioned, it picks up these radio waves. The research team investigating these radio waves has revealed that they come from a space like a hollow cone, where the conditions are just right. So, it seems these waves aren't from aliens after all. But then, the team also discovered that these radio waves emit a massive amount of energy. The energy turned out to be about 23 times greater than researchers initially thought. 
This got them thinking that these electrons and signals could come from other sources. Could it be aliens? Indeed, it wouldn't be the first time scientists are wrong about something they thought they had figured out in the universe. Lately, there have been a lot of strange discoveries that seem to point out that we're not alone in the universe, so there could be more to Io's unexplainable radio signals than meets the eye.